Fuck you. Oh shit! <laughs> I got him! <laughs> no! No way! Yeah, I got him! Henry! Take this did double you, barrel, Henry. Did you did you kill the scav or the the other guy? I don't know what he was shooting at me with, but I got this guy. Dude, I have I seven health. <laughs> um. No shit. fucking way, dude. <laughs> uh, He's tilted. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Okay, I guess. What's going on, guys? It's Devil's Advocate. Today we're going to talk about Dead Side. The pros, the cons, how my experience has been so far. All the footage you're about to see is taken from my Twitch live stream, so be sure to follow me over there. Links in the description below. I'm going to break down what the game is, what works and what doesn't in my experience so far. The game was advertised to me as a Daisy Tarkov hybrid. That's not quite how I'm going to describe it. The game promises to be fairly close to what Tarkov wishes it was, but with some glaring differences. It's a hardcore, open-world shooter with safe zones, missions, events, and base building. No zombies on this one. The game aims to give you a gritty survival experience in a fictional forested Russian province sometime after an unnamed disaster, leaving you and your friends to fight for their lives against other survivors and AI scavs that roam freely in packs and inhabit missions scattered around the map. When you boot up into the game and you get into the server, the first thing you're going to do is discover the inventory. The inventory needs a lot of work. It's functional, but it's got a lot of problems. There's no shortcuts and it's very clunky to use in fast-paced situations. There is a transfer all button, however, it doesn't work on any items on the ground that have stuff in them. You also can't transfer items that you're currently wearing. So if there's a shirt on the ground that you want, and it's empty, but you're wearing a shirt, trying to do the fast transfer isn't going to work. You have to take the shirt off and then pick up the shirt from the ground and put it on you. This leads to a lot of frustrating situations. Say you die and you have to run back and grab your gear. If you run back and grab your gear without dropping all the items you currently have, you're going to have to drag items from your inventory to the ground and then from the ground back to your inventory. What we've done is we've made a practice of before we ever go back to our body, immediately drop all of the gear that you have so that when you get there, you can hit transfer all and not have anything snag on the ground so you can get out of the situation as fast as possible. Hopefully in the future they implement some sort of system where you can hit Control or Alt, kind of like Tarkov, to quickly drop items or pick items up off the ground without having to drag them around and waste a bunch of time. This is actually the smaller of the two problems with the inventory, though. The bigger problem is that there is no sense in what items you can put in certain inventory slots. The most glaring example of this is that you can't put primary weapons in your backpack unless you spend 150,000 rubles on the most expensive backpack in the game, and that only allows you to carry two. This is a pretty big sticking point to me, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So you've explored your inventory and you understand how it works. The next thing you're probably going to end up doing is getting into some combat. Combat is everywhere. The map is not very big right now, and with server caps up to 50, it's pretty hard to avoid players. You come across them at pretty much every single important point on the map. In addition to the players, there are AI scavs that roam all over the map. If you've ever played Tarkov, you're going to be familiar with how these scavs operate. They roam around in groups, and they can have a little bit of inconsistent accuracy, but they're not something you want to take lightly. They're far more aggressive than they are in Tarkov. If you come up close to some, they're going to rush you. There's quite a bit to address with these scavs, so we're going to come back to them later in the video. Weapons are super easy to find. You can find them in any town, in almost any building, and they are very common. The good news is, Almost any of these weapons will kill somebody. It doesn't really matter what they're wearing. The best arm in the game right now does minus 50% damage to the body, and I believe the helmet does somewhere in the 30 to 40% damage reduction. So there's pretty much no gun in the game that you're not going to be able to kill somebody with. There are currently 20 weapons in the game, which I'm going to classify in three categories. Civilian weapons, military weapons, and high class weapons. Civilian weapons are weapons that can be found on the ground in towns and are the most common weapons you'll come across. Civilian weapon spawns consist of two double barrel shotguns, one full length and one sawed off, a short barreled pump action shotgun, a scorp submachine gun, and two pistols, the TTK and the ISH 43S Makarov. Military weapons are weapons that can be found in military compounds and on certain groups of scavs. These weapons include the AK Mod and AKSU automatic rifles, 
the MR5 and UMR45 SMGs, the Mosin and its shorter brother, the Mosin K bolt action rifles, the MS590 shotgun, and the M9 and 1911 pistols. High tier weapons are the best weapons in the game and can only be bought through the trader and can be earned through the loot crates which you can loot once you've completed a mission. These weapons include the SVD sniper rifle, the N4 semi-automatic shotgun, the AR4 automatic rifle, and the P90 SMG. These are the best weapons in the game, but they come at quite a price. More on that later. The combat is the major selling point of this game. This game touts itself as being a realistic shooter, and you can tell that they've definitely translated that into the way they wrote the game. All of the weapons are really punchy, they deal a decent amount of damage, and nobody ever feels like a bullet sponge. There are only three forms of medical supplies at this stage in the game. The rag, crafted by shredding shirts and pants and healing you for about 5 health. Sanitized rags, crafted by combining various forms of alcohol with your rags and healing you for about 15 health. And finally, bandages. These heal you for 35 and cannot be crafted right now, but they can be bought at traders for a thousand rubles. The weapon audio could definitely be improved though. At the moment, it sounds like it's just placeholders. You just start taking them out left to right and use the wall. Go for it. Get inside, get inside, get inside. I'm gonna close the f here, I'm closing this back door. Cover that, I got front. Oh fuck. The biggest negative to the combat right now is the netcode. It's pretty bad. Once you've been playing in the game for about half an hour, the server starts to degrade and you'll notice that you'll be landing shots and you'll see blood and it'll seem like you're hitting them. But for them, it's not happening. For them, you're not dealing any damage and it ends up in situations where you lay into somebody with a full magazine of 5.56 for them to turn around and one tap you with a shotgun. This is something that the develop developers have mentioned that they're already fixing, they're working on it, so hopefully we'll be getting a patch for that pretty soon. This is where the headache begins. The trader system is atrocious. This is hands down the worst aspect of the game right now. There are two trader locations, each with two dealers. One dealer for weapons, ammo and clothes, the other for tools, medical supplies, and other supplies like building supplies. The sale prices and buy prices need a complete overhaul. High tier weapons like the M4, P90, SVD sell for three times the buy price and 25 times the sell price of an AK at 150,000 rubles, but they're not three times better. The best mission drops only enough money to buy one of these high tier weapons if you complete it alone, and that's the high tier missions. If you play with a group of friends and you split the money, you'd have to complete half a dozen of these missions to hope to buy one of these weapons. The backpacks make no sense. Upgrading from a tier 2 backpack to a tier 3 backpack will cost you double the money but only give you two more inventory slots. The same is also true for the tier 4 backpack, with the exception being it allows you to carry two primary weapons. Armor is by far the worst defender when it comes to the price and value ratio. The cheapest armor will average you 50% damage reduction, while the most expensive at 150,000 rubles will give you at most 58% damage reduction. Best case scenario, you're paying three times the money for 8% extra damage reduction. Don't waste your money on anything besides the police vest in the current build of the game. With the damage model the way it is, there's no reasonable advantage to paying for the best vest. Having done extensive testing between the police vest and the heavy assault vest in combat situations, your survivability is pretty much the same. Something needs to be done about the prices. Right now, it is so hard to make money you need to drop the prices in order to add value to buying these weapons. Because right now, if you spend all the money on these weapons and clothes, you're pretty much throwing your money away because your survivability and your damage to other enemies doesn't really change if you spend three times the money. The easiest solution, and this is the one I recommend to the developers, is that they add more things into the game that you can do to make money. Because right now, completing the best missions, best case scenario, you might be able to buy one of these weapons or maybe even receive one in the mission. But there's just not enough of them. There's not enough of these missions to make the money that you need to supply you and your teammates with any of this high tier loot. 
And that's if you consider that high tier loot to even be worth it, because to be frank, the armor right now is totally screwed up. You're not going to survive a whole lot more, if any more, than you would wearing cheap armor. And the weapons do slightly more damage. But with the time to kill, it doesn't really matter because I've seen people with an AR-4 get smoked by a double barrel shotgun. So they need to fix this. Speaking of the missions, the missions are definitely part of what makes this game what it is. It makes it stand out from all these other survival games where the missions are at the very best clunky or they just don't have them at all. All missions provide you with the same quality loot. The missions are non-military, even at the highest level missions. So the best loot they carry are dog tags, mid-tier weapons, and the high-tier weapons that spawn in the box. The big difference between these different levels of missions is the quantity of loot available. Coupled with your highly limited inventory space, you lose a big incentive to pick higher difficulty missions, and the only advantage is the loot that you get in the crate when the mission's complete. But the best missions can drop. A high-tier weapon, 150k, versus 20k you get from an easy mission. Now I'm going to talk about the AI and the map. I am grouping these two things together because they're so interconnected with the way that the AI roam around the map that it makes the map itself feel alive. It feels lived in. There's AI roaming the roads, there's AI in the towns. The way they behave makes this game feel like you're actually in a country that's just fallen into disarray. Large numbers of these scavs can end up being pretty overwhelming. If you find yourself overwhelmed and you try and run away, they have a pretty nasty habit of following you wherever you go, and they are not slow. These scavs tend to roam around pretty much every road in the map, and they always hang out at all of the marked areas, especially the gray dots on the map that don't have labels. At the moment, the map is only 25 square kilometers, but it feels a lot larger than that. There's a pretty good variety of biomes. You've got swamps, mountains, farmlands, all sorts of stuff. In the future, they plan on expanding the map into 225 square kilometers, which will be fantastic, and it's completely scattered with lakes, with rivers, coastline, islands, you name it, it's all there. The map looks great. The graphic design is really well done. Everything looks very crisp. There's a lot of detail in all of the towns with trash thrown all over the place, little objects strewn across the ground and in buildings that make the place feel like it's been lived in. The quality of the map is definitely amplified by the performance and the graphics. At the moment, with a i5 and a GTX 1070, I can run this game at max settings and average about 60 FPS, so anywhere between 60 and 80. But obviously your mileage may vary depending on your hardware. But it's not a hard game to run. I almost never see stutters, and I've never had graphical glitches. I haven't crashed once. They really, really nailed the reliability of this game and the way it's optimized. I hope they keep it up. As they add more content into the game, we'll see. I just played a brief version of the beta build, and it wasn't quite so smooth. But in the current release of the game, performance is 10 out of 10. Audio performance is not 10 out of 10. For some reason, you hear footsteps and reloads from people who are not near you on the map. It's very disorienting. I don't know what it is about this audio engine, but they need to do a complete overhaul. The effects sound great. The nature sounds are great. When you walk near rivers and streams, you hear frogs. When you're walking through the trees, you hear birds and the wind blowing and trees and whatnot. But for some reason, player-made sounds, their location on the map gets completely confused in the audio engine, and you'll hear people right behind you, and you'll turn around and there's nobody there. So they need to completely rework the system. I'm not sure how broken this is, but there are plenty of audio engines that are already out there, like Steam Audio, that they can use to fix this. The base building right now is very basic. There's no way to raid bases, and finding a base building location is very challenging because you're not allowed to build anything near roads. You're also not allowed to build anything within 300 meters of a safe zone or any point of interest on the map. And you're also not allowed to build within 100 meters of somebody else's base. You also only have access to the base that you built. You don't have access to your teammates' bases. If they're offline, you can't open their doors. However, if you're online with them and they're also online and you're in the same group, you can open doors to bases that they've built. 
right now, make sure you don't log off inside a teammate's base. Because if you get online and he's not, you're going to be trapped in there and you're going to have to commit suicide to get out. At the moment, the only thing you can build bases out of is wood. Just in this current build of the game. I'm sure they're going to add more later. But right now, you're going to spend most of your time farming wood and turning it from logs into planks. The base building gives you a lot of options. It's highly customizable. You can build pretty much anything you want. There's plenty of shapes available. There's plenty of different models. You could build large walls. You can build barbed wire, garage doors, regular sized doors. There's endless options here and they're only going to add more. So there's really nothing bad about the base building. At the moment, there's no way to raid bases. Eventually, they've talked about adding some sort of base rating system where you can't raid bases that the hosts or the sorry the owners of the base are on offline which is great because one of the big drawbacks of a lot of these survival games is if you build this base like in daisy you go offline and those other people that you're playing against see that you're offline they can come raid your base and it's unprotected there's nothing you can do about it the way they want to take this game they want to completely eradicate that which is great that's going to add a much more enjoyable play style for people who can't get on the game all the time a little side note on the base building, you can only add three storage containers, large storage containers to your base. And I think you can have three or four small storage containers. So your your storage in your base at the moment is kind of limited. Hopefully they're going to expand that soon. But it's enough storage right now to get by with how much there actually is in the game. So for what the current state of the game is, that seems pretty balanced. Would I recommend this game? I've had a lot of problems with this game. I had a major issue where every six minutes I would get disconnected and I hunted everywhere. I hunted the forums. I hunted on uh, Steam chats. I, I sent messages to the devs and I never got a reply. And there were no solutions online. As far as I can tell, I'm the first person to actually find a solution to this issue. And it's not something that everyone seems to have. There are reports of this issue happening, but it seems like it's a pretty small population. However, for those who did buy the game and do have that problem, it's game, break, game breaking. You can't you can't play. It's six minutes and you're kicked out of the server and you have to reconnect. Happens all the time during fights. Happens all the time when you're trying to do something, complete a mission or whatnot. And it usually leaves your character in game for about 60 seconds where you don't even have the control, control over him. You can get shot and killed and you wouldn't even know it until you logged back in and you were dead. That being said, I have fixed it. It turns out it's a very wide port range that this game uses. It took a long time, but I did narrow down a, a, a certain amount of ports that I need to leave open in order for the game not to kick me. And this was real hard to do because it seems like the game switches ports mid-gameplay. I'm not sure why the game is switching ports mid-gameplay. But once I narrowed those ports down and I got a good balance of not kicking everybody else off the internet because my port range is so big and not getting connect, disconnected every six minutes, it's, it's playable. That being said, this is an extremely enjoyable early access game. And that's a key word, is early access. This game is really, really rough right now. It's got a lot of issues. You heard them all here. I just listed the most of them. I'm sure I missed plenty. I've only played this game for about 60 hours, so I'm sure that there's a lot of things out there that I, I'm not aware of. But the combat is a blast. The way you explore the map, and it, it really feels lived in. It makes you enjoy the experience when you're walking down the road with a group of your friends, and you're carrying a radio. And that radio makes a squelch noise. It goes, Ksh. You know that there's scavs in the area. It, it pushes you towards combat all the time. The radio mechanic is great, because it removes the downtime it's there's so many scavs on the map that the ability to hear when scavs are nearby and actively go out and hunt them really breaks up the monotony it makes you feel like you're part of the world if you just noticed the camera and light shift it's because i completely forgot to tell you guys about the dog tags this game lets you collect dog tags and sell them to the traders allowing you to earn respect points and you can spend these respect points to spawn at any of the named towns on the map this is a fantastic feature of the game. It really, really removes a lot of the frustration of dying. Because if you die and you've been collecting these dog tags, you can usually spawn within one kilometer of where you died. And you can get back there and get back into the fight. It still gives the guys who killed you enough time to loot you if they don't dilly-dally. 
but it gives you a fighting chance to get your loot back. So death isn't always the end in this game. This game is heading towards a place where it's going to be a strong competitor to think games like Daisy and Escape from Tarkov. And I'm not talking about the Daisy standalone. It's going to be way better than Daisy standalone is. It's going to be it's already far more stable. I'm talking about the Daisy mod. The big advantage to this game over Daisy mod and what's really going to make this game better than Daisy mod was is accessibility. You're not going to have to find mods, you're not going to have to figure out what mods work on your computer, and you're not going to have this crazy computer load of having 150 gigabytes of mods for one particular server loaded onto your Armour 2 client. It's a simple process. You hit play, join a server with your friends, and you're off to the races. It's also a lot simpler to play than Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov, if you're new to the game, there's not really a tutorial. You just kind of have to figure it out for yourself. And that can take a while. There's a big learning curve. So it throws you into a game with a bunch of high-level people. You're going to have a really hard time. There are people who have played that game for dozens of hours who still have a hard time and don't understand the mechanics. This game's nothing like that. It's hardcore. But it's straightforward. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You understand how to fight people. It's not complicated. It makes it not something you have to think about all the time. It's not near as stressful. It's got a large, detailed, open world filled with things that can distract you and plenty of stuff to do. There's plenty of missions right now. There's six of them. They are in static locations. In the future, they're going to be much more dynamic, and we're going to have a lot more of them. They're going to increase the map size from 25 square kilometers to 225 square kilometers. And as far as I could tell, the map is extremely diverse. There's going to be a lot of stuff in the map that you can explore. There's going to be online-only base rating. This is something that really stuck out to me, is a lot of these survival games only have offline rating. Well, I won't say only have. They allow offline rating, which means that if you're offline for, you know, a night, anybody who's online and knows that you're not there at your base can raid it, and it will be unprotected. You can't do anything about it. The game developers have explained that they're going to go out of the way to make sure that there is no offline base rating. It is going to be online versus online only. And that's excellent. They've they've needed to implement this in every survival game. I don't know why nobody's done it yet. It only makes sense. So we'll see how well they implement it. This is a very exciting feature. Pretty soon we're going to have vehicles. They've already announced that they're going to be adding cars, they're going to be adding helicopters, and they're going to be adding boats. So the monotony of running around from place to place, pretty soon that's going to be gone. They've shown they can push out high quality content on a consistent basis. Just recently we got updates through Twitch, not quite into the game yet, but we've gotten updates showing that we're going to be getting a Groza rifle and we're going to be getting an AUG rifle. If you go and download the public test environment, you'll see even more content. And they just released this public test environment, which allows them to test this new content without breaking the existing game. Which is great, because for a while, every time they'd release a new update, it would destroy some sort of mechanic in the game. And it, the, the eventuality is that a lot of people would get off the game because it wasn't working. This test environment's going to fix that. I'm really excited they've implemented this because it gives people like me who want to see what the future of the game is and are really engaged in the progress kind of a sneak peek into what's coming. I did see in the sneak peek in this uh, build of the game, they have silencers. They're not, they're not functional. The way it works is when you get into the public test environment, they give you a bunch of free items. So you can't attach these suppressors to anything right now. But... A 45 suppressor is coming, 762 by 39 for the AK is coming, and 556 suppressor is coming. Those are the only three I saw. Doesn't mean it's the only three there's going to be. But what it tells me is that they're, they're adding content all the time. They've got a lot of stuff they're working on, a lot of stuff we haven't seen yet. So I'm super excited to see what they come out with, because it seems like, at the very least, the models and the mechanics that they release are pretty well ironed out by the time they get out. Sometimes they're not, but this test environment's kind of, that's the whole point. It's to iron this stuff out before it gets released. So, my original question, would I recommend it? 
if you want to get in the ground level of a game that's got great potential and you're willing to shell out $20 for an early access game that has a possibility of being a flop, this could be the game for you. If you're looking for a polished game that's near completion, you probably want to wait for, at the very least, a few months. And I'll be making content all the time, informing you on the progress that this game is making. So, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you disliked or liked today's video. And drop a comment down below telling me why you did either. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe, subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, it's not going to tell you when I upload videos. I don't know why YouTube is doing this. I stream regularly on Twitch, so you can follow me over there and get a preview of what I might be working on next. I'll leave all the related links in the description down below.